Okay, so uh, we'll look at uh, clocking uh, in the next couple of lectures. Um, as you know, in when, when, whenever you do any computation, you need to do two things. One is to sequence operations because you know, things have to happen one after another. So you need to have a way of sequencing it. And uh, the second thing is, uh, you know, there is a notion of uh, synchronization when multiple things come in. You know, they have to come together to do some computation. So that is synchronization. So how do you do both of these? So using a clock is a convenient way of doing it. That's not the only way, but it's a relatively easy way to engineer. So that is what most of the chips do. They use a clock, a global clock signal, which does the timekeeping and which helps with sequencing, which essentially you can think of it as pipe planning and also <coughs> synchronization where you basically uh, <coughs> allow for multiple signals to come together at a particular at the same time. Uh, the other way of doing this is to asynchronous techniques, which uh, we will not be covering in this course, but most of the chips are done using synchronous design techniques. So the if you look at the clock, uh, the clocking system. One of the key elements is the sequencing element itself. And uh, the basic element is a latch. It is level sensitive. So it is transparent. It has two phases, transparent and opaque. You can also have a flip-flop which is edge triggered. So uh, you can have a master slave flip-flop, D flip-flop, etc. Or there's a third approach which is a pulsed latch, which is sitting, which sits somewhere in between a latch and a flop where what it is is actually a latch, but the clock signal used is a pulsed clock signal. Okay, so we'll kind of look at that in more detail later, so it will become clearer what that is. So a basic latch is something you have already seen earlier in the earlier lectures. The simplest latch essentially consists of one transmission gate. So this is a transmission gate out here. And uh, the node X follows D as long as the transmission gate is open. That means phi is 1 and of course phi bar is 0. So both NMOS and PMOS are on. So whatever happens in D comes and gets reflected in X. So it's transparent. But as soon as phi goes low, phi bar also goes high. So both NMOS and PMOS are off. So this becomes opaque. So the last value of X is held till the next time the latch opens. Of course, if you see here, the storage is happening, of storage of information is happening in this node out here, X. It's a dynamic node, right? You have capacitance, information is stored as charge, right? Either VDD, that is positive charge or zero, there is no charge. And that happens, and that capacitance is essentially the capacitance due to the source drain diffusion region of both NMOS and PMOS, some wiring, and then the input gate capacitance of the NMOS and PMOS. So there is a parasitic capacitance on which information is stored, but that information can leak away because there is always leakage current. Even though these two are off, these two transistors, you will have some subthreshold leakage, you will have some leakage through the diode junctions, you can also have leakage through the gates, right, especially in subthreshold process. So that is why these dynamic latches are not very useful when you want to operate at slow speeds, at normal speeds. Only when you are really operating at very high speeds where you know that the information is not needed for more than maybe a nanosecond or something like that. So you don't have to worry about leakage. So that's when you use dynamic latches. Now you have a buffer. A buffer is not required for the latch, for the basic operation of the latch, but it is required to be able to drive the signal out because X by itself is just a capacitor. If you want to drive some load, you need to put an inverter. Similarly, you can also have an inverter in the front. So you can have it in the front or in the back or in both places. Now this is a static latch. So what you have done is you have taken this design and then you have put in a feedback inverter out here. And this feedback is a tri-statable inverter. So you can think of it as either an inverter with a pass gate or the pass gate is embedded inside the inverter itself. But the idea is when the latch is transparent, that is D is connected to X, you want to disconnect the feedback. Otherwise, you will have a fight. Two guys are fighting each other. And when you become opaque, 
you connect the feedback. So it's a opposite effect so that the information X gets complemented and again comes back and it's, it's stored in a static fashion <coughs> overcoming any leakage issues. So there, you don't have to worry about leakage. This is volatile. As long as power is there, this will maintain the information. Why should we keep this, this signal? The alternate thing is this feedback inverter, you remove this phi and phi bar, just make it a simple inverter but make it weak. That way such that D can always overpower the feedback. So when I am transparent, you want data D to come into X. It will fight it, but once it overpowers it and X flips, then this will also follow due to the positive feedback and then they are in the same direction. There is no longer any issue. This is what happens in a memory also. SRAM cell, there is a feedback. You overpower the feedback. Right? The same thing has to apply. And then, of course, this is a, in a standard cell environment, you put a buffer at the input and output because you don't know what kind of loads the latch is driving and so on. So you want to isolate the internal node with a buffer on both sides. Buffer is just an inverter. So this is what a latch is. So you, in the opaque state, the transmission gate is off. So the information stays in the node X, either statically or dynamically. In the transparent state, when phi is high, uh, any any changes in D gets reflected in X. And the propagation delay is the propagation delay through the transmission gate to charge up or discharge this capacitance at this node X through this uh, thing. So, so that is basically, if you see this latch will have much higher propagation delay than this latch because any change in D has to propagate through this inverter, through the transmission gate and drive much larger capacitance. There is capacitance of gate due to here, here and then the source drain capacitance of this. So the TDQ will be much lower here. Okay, that is the price you pay whereas this will be much smaller TDQ but it is dynamic. That delay is called the clock to Q delay. Okay, so there are different delay parameters. There is T data to Q delay. There is T clock to Q delay. Now, if you see out here, what happens is that typically in the case of a latch, the really the thing is, the you want to have the latch work where you know the it's transparent and the data flows through most of the time. So really, the the delay of concern is the T D to Q delay. Okay, whereas in the case of a flop, as we will see next, the clock edge causes the new data to happen. Whereas in the case of a latch, the new data happens whenever, even when it's transparent, the new data happens when, whenever the D changes, you get a new data. So the D to Q is the important parameter in terms of delay calculations. But of course, in the case of a latch also, we will see next, we, there is a notion of a setup and hold time. We will kind of look at that next. That happens here, where when the latch is going from transparent to opaque, there is a small window out here. If the data change happens before the window, that gets reflected. That means it just, door is about to close, but you just enter, manage to enter. You just squeeze it, right? So what is the latest time you can arrive and still make it through? The door is closing, but you just make it through. That is the setup time. Uh, the whole time, of course, we don't have an analogy with humans and <laughs> doors, but the idea is that if I, you know, if say the data changes, uh, data is 0 okay, and I want to capture a 0 and after the latch it goes from transparent to opaque the data changes okay. so I should still have captured a 0 but if the change you know you are too you know you are in a hurry you are you know you are urgency you just change the data much sooner then it this latch would not capture the proper 0 it will try it will get and capture the 1 so there is a hold time requirement that means you have to hold the data you have to set up the data well before the edge and you have to hold the data for a short time after the edge. So that is the setup and hold. Okay. And if you see the setup hold are all related to propagation times through these. You have two things happening. The phi is changing from high to low. Okay. That means the transmission gate is changing from open to close. As it is changing, the data is also trying to get in or the data which is already in, it is trying to change because of the hold. In either case, the propagation delays through this are what determines the setup time. And the propagation delays are determined based on the delays, you know, the, you know essentially the RC delays of this inverter, this thing, the capacitance and so on. 
So if someone asks you how do I make a very fast setup hold time, you have to basically look at. So if you you can clearly imagine that this one will have a very fast setup hold time because it has very little delay, right? Whereas something like this will have more because it has the data has to go through all these things to make it. Between this and this, between this and this. Yes. See what happens uh, here is that uh, clearly it will be different, right? Because you have an extra inverter here. So for you to capture, for X to follow D, it will happen with a slightly larger delay because there is an additional inverter. Here. But set a time will be more. Okay, similarly, hold time will be. Hold time depends on output. Hold time depends on. How you are charging output depends. It's the same here. How the hold time is. How long? Okay, so let us look at the next slide. How do you measure setup and hold time? Okay, so. So what you do is if you want to measure the setup time, so this there are too many things out here, we'll just take it step by step here. So let us look at this out here. Okay, so what you have is you have a clock. Uh, here I am looking at positive edge triggered, okay, whereas the previous examples were with falling edge was the capturing edge. Whereas here I am looking at the rising edge, it conceptually it doesn't make any difference. So let us say your data D is going from 1 to 0, okay, and uh, this edge is capturing this data, and so you see the output of the flop was high initially, and then it goes to 0. So I want to capture a 0, so data is going from 1 to 0, and output is going from 1 to 0, that is what we want. Now you look at the delay from the clock to Q. Okay, you measure this delay. If this data going from 1 to 0 happened well ahead of time, okay, this will have a certain clock to Q delay. But as this edge, the 1 to 0 edge starts coming closer and closer and closer to this, what happens is the clock to Q delay will start increasing. Why is that? Because what is happening is that you see this, this is a feedback element, right? So, let us say I am going from 1 to 0 in D, that means x is going from 0 to 1. And as I come closer and closer to this edge when this is changing from transparent <coughs> to opaque, this x would not have had time to fully charge up to 1, okay, because it will just partially charge up, there is not enough time. And uh, because of that it takes additional time from the time, if you measure from the time the clock to the output q, it will take more time because this amplifier has to amplify and then the signal will come out. So that is basically what is happening out here. If you see out here the setup time uh, the will basically the clock to Q delay sorry as as the data to clock delay starts reducing 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 okay that is what we are measuring out here the clock to Q delay will start increasing and you see this ha this has this kind of a hockey stick curve and Eventually, of course, what happens is that you fail to capture the data correctly because it is too close. You do not capture it and so you can say it takes infinite time to get the data because it is just not, you do not get the right data. So that is why it just goes off asymptotically, right. Now how is the setup time defined? So typically, you know, so there, there could be multi, you know, one popular definition is you look at the degradation in the clock to Q delay. See, you see that even when I am here, even when my, uh, my data comes very close to the clock edge. I can still capture the data, but it takes very long time. So how do you define the setup time? So the setup time is defined as the degradation, the time required, the time between data and clock such that the clock to queue delay is no worse than some percentage of the best clock to queue delay. So you say 5%, some people might use 10%, you know, that number will vary, but that is basically the thing. So that is what is used. So how do you in so how is this characterized, say in simulation what you do is, you do multiple simulation runs, you have an edge like this, you record the clock to queue, 
then you do another simulation run where you move the data edge a little bit closer to the clock edge then you record the clock to queue like that you keep on doing as is shown out here the edge keeps moving as the edge keeps moving you keep on seeing recording the the clock to queue here it was here then it becomes a little bit slow 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 you record it and you get this and then you see the time when the delay has become 5% worse compared to the time when it was the fastest the fastest will happen when the data edge is very far away sufficiently far away so that is the definition of the setup plan Yes. So the the here what we are saying is we want to in this slide we are looking at how to how is the setup time defined and how do you obtain that from simulations? Okay. Right. So it has nothing to do with weak or strong. It just got to do with time. Okay. See, no matter how strong it is, it takes, whenever D changes, after some delay, X will change. There is some delay because the signal has to propagate through here and here. But in the time when D changes and it's propagating through here, let us say phi also starts changing. So this transmission gate, which had initially <coughs> low impedance, starts becoming high impedance because phi is falling. So in that time, X might not, exactly, it might not charge fully. So, but it is starts sufficiently so that it trips this feedback and it eventually goes the right direction. It, you still capture the right data, but it takes longer. Does it mean that X is not strong? Immediately? Exactly, because, exactly, because the transmission gate is not as strong as it was because transmission gate strength is changing with time because phi is reducing. The edge of phi, as the phi goes from 1 to 0, the transmission gate strength changes from very low impedance to very high impedance. So the signal at X is now big? Signal at X is not fully digital signal. It will be somewhere in between. See, what does it mean to say signal is weak? It means amplitude is not, amplitude is not, not fully so where it is supposed to be. Provided the value of signal at X, the feedback motion will bring it to one stable state. Provided it crosses the trip point of the feedback structure. No, no, no. The trip point will be determined by the relative strengths of of these two uh, N MOS and P MOS of this will be there. Right? That will determine the trip point. So, uh, yes, you can definitely. You can, you can, at the end of the day, these are delays and delays are, if you really finally trace back R times C, so you keep capacitance low and increase the drive strength, right, and try to reduce the number of gates in the path and so on. That's what you have to do to really reduce the setup hold time. Okay. So, it's are you asking is the setup hold time independent of the supply voltage? No, setup hold time will depend on the supply voltage. See, because supply voltage as you scale down, we have you have already seen in the earlier <coughs> thing, everything slows down. So setup hold time will also slow down. Absolutely. Setup hold time is dependent completely on the technology the device sizes and the supply voltage, the temperature, the process condition, everything comes into the picture. It is not anything fundamentally different. If you see, come back to this, it's essentially the delay. It's related to delays, propagation delays out here. Yes, so the rise time of the clock is also very important. For fast setup hold time, you want to have a very fast edge. <laughs> if you <laughs> see the 
you can even have negative setup time by the way <laughs> so that is possible but you know there, there is a the problem is with uh, very slow edges of the clock uh, we'll kind of see that in the next lecture <coughs> when does the clock edge cross 50 percent point because you're measuring delay 50 percent to 50 percent there will be a lot of un more uncertainty in that because that slow rising edges means the driver of the clock is very weak and also the a small change in voltage will lead to a large change in time because it is a, the slope is slanting right a small change in the voltage dimension when it translates to time it will lead to a large change in time when you have a ramp let us think of, think of a ramp right so ramp has a certain slope s okay that means for a certain voltage v the time is say s times say v by s okay when the slope is uh, so when the slope is small when s is small i mean when it's a very slow rising thing then the time for the same voltage will be much larger now what does it mean it means that if i have a ramp between a, 0 to VDD and VDD changes due to noise by a small amount delta VDD it will change the position of the crossing of the ramp to the 50 percent point by some amount delta T which is related to slope and the delta V right that change in time crossing will depend on will be dependent on the slope and that when the slope is very small that delta T will be much larger so there is much more uncertainty as to when has the edge you know because when has the clock edge happened Right, you say it has happened when the clock signal passes 50 percent point but that point will move around much more when the edges are weak so that is why so that is also called jitter so you want to to have low jitter you need to have very sharp edges so for the whole time you do the other way yeah No, no, no. Setup time is the 50 percent point of D to 50 percent point of the clock, and such yeah. that the delay. Yeah. The need of setup time is due to because of a clock edge is changing, and the <coughs> signal takes time to reach to the X from the D. On that delay, signal is not available to it. So that depend, that should not depend on clock edge. That should depend only in this delay. See, basically, if you look at the transmission gate out here, I mean, its impedance is a time varying impedance, and that depends on the edge rate. The slower the edge is changing, you know, the impedance change characteristic is different. So. Um, you have a uh, the you know you have the problem you, you know so you can kind of make a case that impedance remains at a higher impedance state for longer so the setup time should be shorter right but also you'll have a, a impact for the whole time whole time will also be um, what will happen to the whole time whole time will also be shorter but your the uncertainty will be larger because of the slope being very weak. The delay also, the passing value itself will change with the slant of the clock. Yes. So it's dependent on that way. Yes, that's right. 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 In the case of a hold uh, time measurement, you do the other way. See, you see out here what we are doing is, uh, let us say the data, we want to capture a zero. Okay, the data is zero in the bot bottom here. And then after the clock edge, it becomes a one. Okay, let us say Q was initially high and it becomes zero. 
which is what you want because it's capturing a zero okay but now what happens is that as i move my so then you have a certain clock to queue delay out here okay it's the same as this clock to queue delay but as you start moving your edge closer and closer which edge edge from the right side okay the data is going from 0 to 1 but it's that change is happening sooner and sooner from this side so what happens is that this x which was perfectly zero in the earlier cases now slowly becomes a little bit higher 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 because this change is kind of sneaking through the change of 0 to 1 is sneaking through it should have captured a zero but the change is happening too close to the edge and some of it is sneaking through and it causes it takes some time for this to settle back to zero uh, to switch to zero right so that is basically the uh, problem out here again you have the same issue where the clock to queue starts rising up and again you can use the same definition of 5% degradation to define your hold time so setup time is a time before the clock edge you want to make sure that the data is settled hold time is the time before which you should not allow the data to change so keep it held for that time. Hmm. See the 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 thing is that <coughs> as you will see uh, what will happen. Okay, so now, firstly, in terms of definition of how you measure setup and hold, first let's understand that, right? So that is kind of clear out. I hope it is clear how you how you set up and hold defined <coughs> and how it is measured. Is that clear? not clear yet hold time okay so let's come back to hold time out here in the case of hold time what we are saying is let us take this data input to zero okay and then it after the clock edge after some time input goes to one now let us say q initially was one so when clock edge happens q goes to zero so that is what you want to that is the right behavior q is capturing the zero but now what you do is you start this change of data from 0 to 1 starts happening sooner and sooner after this clock edge that means you are not holding it at a 0 for you know the amount of time you are holding it for 0 you are reducing 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 as that happens the delay the clock to queue starts increasing ok and that is what is shown out here the clock to queue starts increasing as you move this edge closer and closer so you define the whole time to be the time between data and the clock such that the delay clock to queue has degraded to be 5% of what it was before. You say that is the hold time. So you see there are four times setup 0, setup 1, hold 0, hold 1 they can all be different. Okay, so it is characterized by four parameters and you can you look at the worst of the setup 0, setup 1 you say that is the setup time worst of the hold 0, hold 1 that is the hold time. So that is how you characterize it. Now internally what happens, how, what is causing this hold and what is causing the setup, that really depends on the detailed circuit implementation out here, okay, and it is related to the propagation delays of the data and the clock and so on. As I said, you can move, see there is a setup hold window, but that whole window can be moved left and right based on how much buffering you put. For example, if you put a lot of buffering in the clock, in this cell, internally you buffer the clock. So the actual clock comes. When you look at this as a black box, you have an entity with a clock pin and a data pin. But internally, maybe you can put more delays in the clock or in the data and so on. What that does is the setup hold window can move left or right based on the where the delays are. So, so <coughs> if you <coughs> So if you put buffer in the clock, what will happen? Let us say you put some, you know, you have this thing coming in and you put a buffer out here. So say one, you know, couple of invert, two inverters out here. And then you look at this as a black box. 
so you have the clock internally has got shifted a little bit inside so you have little you can afford to have the data come a little bit later right so you have moved the setup hold window towards the whole side right similarly you can put buffer on the data side you move it on this side so so you have to basically look at the internal details to see where the what is so you can kind of make that is why set up and hold negative positive and so on it's not something uh, mysterious in that sense once you understand it's a relative delays in data and clock but there is a setup hold window hmm. yes you need to hold the data for longer because the clock what is happening is that internally the clock is getting delayed so from outside you have to make sure the data is being held sufficiently long you don't change and put in the new data before internally they had a chance to capture so you have to hold the data longer <coughs> when you put a buffer in the clock path sir as we as we increase the clock age then my hold time should increase my hold margin as you as I डेटा That is that's what I'm saying. You can move the by doing you can either delay the data or the clock. Basically, you will be moving the setup hold window. We inserting a buffer just simply delays the clock by one instant. Right. Nothing is done. Right. Right. So the what happens is the setup hold window will remain the same, but relatively it will keep shifting. It will shift either to the right side if you put buffer in the clock, or if it will shift to the left side if you put buffer in the data. <coughs> Correct. So that comes down to the circuit design of the flops or latches and so on, where you have to look at the internal design, keep the capacitances low, keep the drive strength large, so that you have fast edge rate. So this you already know. Flip flop is built out of two latches, <coughs> master and slave. So now when you have a you have three different styles for sequencing in a synchronous design one is a flop based which is what you have been using and most commonly it is also used where the flop is essentially a edge triggered device so this edge captures this data launches it to this pipe stage the data flows through by end of the cycle it is ready here to be captured by the flop you can have a latch based design where you have latches which are transparent on opposite phases or different phases so when this is open the data comes through here but during that time this is closed and then after half a cycle this opens and the data goes through and so on so it's like ping pong you cannot keep opening and then you have a pulse latch design so one of the benefits of a latch based design is that it turns out that the overhead you pay <coughs> will be less for sequencing we'll see that and then it also allows for you know potentially some clock skew handling clock skew and so on so that maybe in the next few slides it will become clear and then you have a pulse latch design where you just use a latch but what you do is you use a clock which is a short pulse <coughs> so what happens is it kind of mimics a edge triggered flop but it also because for the duration of the pulse it mimics a latch so it's trying to combine the benefits of both latch and flop so that is what a pulse latch is. so typically you know when you do timing analysis and so on it's much easier to do analysis of a flop based design see in a flop based design you just have to analyze each stage out here that's it you know you have to make sure every stage by itself meets timing 
In the case of latch based design, what happens is because latches can be transparent, data can flow through, you know, some of the data can even in this cycle, <coughs> um, the, the, especially when, you know, when you have skews and so on, it can happen that both the latches are V1 and V2 are on at the same time. So data can flow through. And you can have multiple, you might have to analyze multiple site, multiple stages of the pipeline to kind of really see if everything is okay. You know, it, it, it might be the case that the data races through to the next stage and it is still okay, there is nothing wrong with that. But for you to be really sure, you have to really go through all that analysis of across multiple stages. So it makes it kind of much more complex to do the timing analysis. The latch, but it has, it gives you the benefit that <coughs> as you will see this concept of time borrowing I kind of I'll borrow some time from the next pipe stage here in a flop based design these are hard edges you better finish your job between these two edges then I give it to the next phase. whereas in the case of a latch what happens is that let us say the data comes I mean this latch 5-1 becomes open and this stage has not yet finished its job but 5-1 opens up it's okay because when 5 one edge happens, this latch just becomes transparent. Even if this comes a little later, it is okay. It will flow through, right? So that is called time borrowing. It will flow through. So what you are doing is you are borrowing time from the next pipe stage. So if I want to analyze and make sure this is okay, I really have to go deep into the next pipe stage, perhaps even multiple such stages depending on the latch, the clocking architecture. And it makes the timing analysis quite complex. <coughs> but it gives you the flexibility of borrowing time. Pardon? It's it's severe as well as not severe. In fact, that is the whole point of a latch is to support the case when things are not uh, uh, synced up in an easier way because to sync up these clocks is very hard but you need to do it in the flop case right so the latches are more tolerant to clock skew so that is the benefit of latches because you have the concept that see if the, if the latch opens up a little later that is okay in the case of a flop if the edge happens a little later that is not a problem but if the latch opens up a little earlier that is okay it opens up and it is transparent let the data come later it will go through Whereas in the case of a flop, if the clock edge comes a little earlier and the data is not yet there, that's it, it's gone, right? So you see the latches are more tolerant to skew because you can borrow time. So, but if with the latch, it can end up that you are borrowing time from next stage, which borrows from the stage after that and so on. And eventually everything might work out like that. If there are n stages, you are only allowed n clock periods, okay? But how the periods are apportioned can change. One might use, you know, 0 0.9, other might use 1.3 and so on. The sum should be equal to n times the clock period. But that analysis can be quite complex. In the case of a flop based design, you just analyze stage by stage independently. In some sense, you are done. The pulse latch allows you or it's a concept which has come up to give you a benefit of both. That I don't want to complicate my analysis, but I also want to allow a little bit of time borrowing. So this allows, these are what are called soft edges. It allows some borrowing from the next stage, but I can't borrow from stage after that because it's a very short window for borrowing. So when phi is when phi p goes high, this latch becomes transparent for a short duration of time. If I miss my deadline, I come a little later, it's okay because I still have some opportunity. It will make okay, so that is a soft edge. That is what time borrowing gives me. Yeah. Pardon? Uh, So, no, in this, if you see in the case of a flop, the setup time is with respect to the positive edge. Yes. Whereas in the case of this pulsed latch, the setup time is with respect to the no, negative edge. You define it with respect to the no, negative edge. No, it's, it's, what's that? No, I have much better the next timing for sending data See, at the end of the day, you cannot, you know, nothing, I mean, you know, there is your, on an average, you can only take one clock cycle per stage. All this allows you is to, if you have stages, adjacent stages, you can borrow a little bit of time from adjacent stage. But on an average, it should be the same. Okay, you cannot keep on borrowing, 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 then it doesn't work. Okay. 
so there is this notion of uh, combinational sorry contamination and propagation delay that means propagation delay is the longest delay from the time the input changes to the time the output settles whereas contamination delay is the earliest the input changes okay maybe there are multiple paths through this and some quick path gets accelerated and y changes or you can think of a and y as vectors you know some bit of y changes but all the bits only change after some time so you can you know so there is a early it starts changing and then it settles down and it goes to the final one so that is contamination so similarly you have the clock the setup and hold for a flop and then you have ccq and pcq ccq is contamination delay for clock to queue pcq is propagation delay from clock to queue we'll come to the latch later so let's look at the max delay constraint so the timing constraints so whenever you do a synchronous digital design you have to do a timing analysis and ensure that timing constraints are met and there are basically two timing constraints max delay constraint min delay constraint so what is the max delay constraint max delay is what is the maximum delay allowed for the combinational logic okay so that everything still works properly so if you see out here this clock edge captures this data and puts it on q1 and then the data flows through comes to d2 which then should be captured by this clock at f2 for the next cycle so what that means is if you see the propagation when the clock edge happens d to q there is a clock to q delay <coughs> and then there is a propagation delay through the latch uh, sorry through the combination logic and then you have to make sure that the data comes and settles at least t set up before the next clock edge so that means the propagation delay t pcq plus t pd plus t set up less than equal to tc or t pcq plus t pd should be less than equal to the clock period minus t set up that is the budget you have so whatever you do you have to ensure that things will finish within that time so one nice thing here is suppose you violate the timing constraint you can increase the clock period you can slow it down a little bit and everything will start working fine right so that is the nice thing of max delay constraint you get the chip back it's not working at the speed you can slow it down it will work so absolutely so now if you see out here the delay from q1 to d2 think of q1 as a right now it's just shown as one signal but really in a combinational stage you have so many input signals to the logic so many output signals to the logic so you have to look at the worst case delay because all the inputs it's like a vector okay almost all the inputs on this side left side are launched at the same time at the by the clock edge but as they propagate through the combination logic they take different paths and different people will arrive at different time but and the clock edge has to wait for the slowest person to come and then it will fire and so that everything so that is the synchronization that's what we said all the inputs all the outputs of the combination logic have to wait so that before they are fed to the next stage they are fed in a synchronous fashion if they all have to be fed together so yeah you are determined by the slowest person the slowest delay determines the clock period so you have to look at the worst case that is the critical path so the critical path is the path which has the slowest q to d delay so what is the min delay constraint min delay is you have an edge okay now in this pipe stage actually what you wanted was this edge launches the data the data flows through and is captured by the next edge that is what you want normal operation right you have one full pipe stage but what happens is that this combinational logic there is some rogue path or some short path where you know when this edge launches this data out here it goes so fast that it just gets captured and or perturbs the data on this flop it just races through okay because it's not it's violating the if it violates the whole time of this because when this edge happens there is a whole time that means d2 should not change for some time but if before that time d2 changes because you know clock edge happens this goes through zooms through this zooms through it comes in here d2 changes before this had a chance to capture it then you have violated the whole time so that is a, that means there is a minimum delay required out here if you violate the minimum delay you will not get the right operation
right so it is a where the clock there's a t contamination clock to q delay it rises through there's a c t c d and there is t hold that means t t c q the shortest delay through these flops plus the shortest delay to the combination logic has to be at least bigger than the whole time of this flop right so that is the min delay constraint now the min delay constraint suppose you have a problem that is you violate this constraint and you will find it's not working properly unfortunately you can't fix it that easily you can't slow down the clock you can't speed up the clock because it's a property of the same edge when you slow down or speed up the clock you are changing the edge delays in the clock you know here but here you know slowing down the clock doesn't help much so then you have to you can't even that you have to maybe put liquid nitrogen or blow or something you know try to change the temperature up and down do something you know so that this becomes slower <coughs> i'm saying after the chip comes but during design time of course you have to slow it down by adding buffers but once the chip comes and it fails due to whole time it's a unfortunate situation <laughs> so this whole time violation is a something very important to fix okay because at least the max time violation you can slow it down and it will work it don't be dead but this one it's kind of tough so there is one more complication out here which is the clock skew what is clock skew see we have finally there is a single clock source and that clock edges have to be distributed to all the sequencing <coughs> elements latch flop whatever it is they are supposed to norm arrive at nominally the same time at every point right so clock coming here and the clock coming at this flop are happening at the same time that is what you want ideally as a designer that's what you expect when you write your verilog or vhgl code always at pause edge you are assuming that pause edge is coming at the same time everywhere but physically there has to be some distribution network which is distributing the clock edges right for the simplest take the simplest one there is a buffer here which is just an inverter or pair of inverters which splits it sends it here and sends it here now if there is symmetry out here you can clearly well imagine that the clock edge will the delay from here to here and here to here will be the same so you will have the simultaneity of edges happen happening but if there is a mismatch in the delay then one clock edge here could come little earlier than the other right or little later than the other so then you have a clock skew so the difference in arrival time of the edges at these points is called the clock skew clock skew messes things up right because you launch the data out here the data propagates and let us say this clock edge happens to come a little earlier by t skew then you have lost time right you this better settle before that so what that means is the propagation delay from clock to queue plus propagation delay to the logic has to be less than tc the clock period minus t setup minus t skew so the equation has changed so t skew takes away from the timing budget you have less time available to do your work so skew is important of course you can argue well, what if the skew is the other direction like so then you have more time available it becomes plus t skew so you have more time available but you will get hit somewhere else as i said there is no free lunch here. again you know a lot of times you will have feedback see the data is not just flowing one way that is a very restricted kind of chip where data comes in and keeps going one direction usually there will be feedbacks you do some computation here then next stage you come back again comes back to this stage after some some piece of data comes back so you'll have cycles loops so if you delay the clock here then if the data is coming back then for the next guy you have a re reduced cycle time so on an average you want to make sure clock skew is zero you don't want to unnecessarily delay unless you know for sure it's very special constraint then you can play tricks with the arrival time of the clock right but in general if you don't have such freedom then you have to ensure that the arrival time of the clock at all these flops is the same so clock skew you have to try to get to zero what about the min delay in the min the case of min delay what if this clock at the receiving flop gets delayed the edge gets delayed that means d2 has to wait longer i can't change d2 before i could change but now the <coughs> clock is not yet ready to capture it so i better keep it keep the hold the data so it increases the hold time 
TCCQ, the minimum delay through the clock to Q plus minimum delay through the logic has to be bigger than whole time plus T skew. So T skew worsens the whole time problem and it worsens the setup time problem. But it happens with different signs out here. Because as a designer, you have to margin for the worst case condition. You know, you don't know. Skew could help you or hurt you. But as a designer, you have to assume it hurts you and then design according to that. Because it's kind of random. Okay. So in the next class, we'll uh, look at clock distribution and then also uh, perhaps latches and pulse latches. But before I close today, any other questions? So the, the question is, uh, can you explain again the impact of skew, right? So let us first look at the max delay. You have a certain budget for doing the work. But if this guy, this edge comes a little earlier due to skew, that means the arrival time of the clock here and here is mismatch this comes a little earlier then you have less time to do the work right that is what is shown out here you had a budget of tc minus t setup to do this combination logic but now because this has come earlier you have less time right similarly in the case of hold min delay what happens you are supposed to hold the data for some minimum time given by the whole time of the flop but if this edge happens a little later, then you have to hold it for that much extra time. Right? Because the flop edge has not happened, you better not change it. <coughs> so that is why the minimum delay constraint is that minimum delay through this path HB is worsened by the whole time plus the T skew.